Did you know that over 100 million Bic pens are sold each year, making them one of the most ubiquitous writing tools worldwide? These simple yet essential instruments have been part of our classrooms, offices, and homes for decades, each capable of drawing a line up to two kilometers long before running out of ink. Now, imagine living in a world where there were no pens. How would you write your name or draw your favorite cartoon? Well, let's find out how it all started. A very long time ago, around 3200 BC, someone in Egypt had a very smart idea. The first pens were made from the roots of tall, strong plants which looked like big straws. These were called reed pens. They would dip these reeds in ink made from soot, the black stuff that comes from fire, and veggie oils. After that, they would write on papyrus sheets which were the first kind of paper. Let's go back in time to about 600 AD in Europe. People began to use quill pens made from feathers. Yes, the same feathers birds used to fly. Not just any feathers either. Most of the time, they came from geese and swans. The tip would be carefully cut to make it just right for the writing. These quill pens were pretty cool. The tips could hold ink, so you didn't have to dip them in ink as often. Then something really cool happened in the year 953 AD in Egypt. A king wanted a pen that wouldn't make a mess. He didn't want ink on his royal clothes. So a clever inventor made a special pen that had a little tank inside to hold the ink. This was the first fountain pen, and it was so good at not spilling that the king was super happy. As time zoomed ahead to the 19th century, people invented the ballpoint pen, which is a lot like the pens we use at school today. This pen had a tiny ball at its tip that rolls around as you write, picking up ink from inside the pen and letting it flow smoothly onto the paper without any mess. You may have seen or heard of a name at school, Bic. The idea behind Bic pens came from the same ballpoint pen. Mark Bick bought a factory in France in 1944 after seeing how popular the new ballpoint pens were getting. He believed he could make them better and less expensive so that everyone could use them. That's how Bick pens came to be. But have you ever thought about how something so normal can be made on such a large scale? Join me today to learn how millions of Bick pens are made in workshops and how ink is made. The ball at the tip of a ballpoint pen is usually made of tungsten carbide, which is known for being very strong, long-lasting, and resistant to wear. Because it's strong and doesn't easily bend, tungsten carbide is perfect for the constant wear and tear of writing. This makes sure that the pen stays smooth and easy to use over time. Thanks to its toughness, tungsten carbide is not only used to make pen balls, but also in many other fields. The fact that it doesn't scratch makes it useful for digging tools, cutting tools, and even jewelry. This shows off the material's special mix of strength and resistance to wear, which is why it works so well for ballpoint pens that need to be precise. There is a small hole in the tip of the pen that holds the ball. This lets the ball spin easily while you write. This movement is very important because it helps the ink move from the ink reservoir to the paper. The width of the line it makes depends on the size of the ball. Most balls are between a half a millimeter and 1.6 millimeters in diameter. These balls are carefully made to very precise measurements to make sure they always work right and let ink flow smoothly. This stuff used to make the barrel and the cap is called polypropylene copolymer or PPC. These aren't just any ordinary plastics, they were chosen because they are strong and light which makes them perfect for both the pen's structure and its ease of use. Inside the pen, the ink container is also made of PPC. This is where the ink is kept, ready to go when you tell it to. The reservoir needs to be perfectly lined up with the barrel so that the ink flows smoothly to the tip. It's like how a knight sheath holds his trusted sword securely. The first step in making a ballpoint pen is forming its main parts, such as the barrel and the cap. This is done with a technique called plastic molding. 
think of this as playing with a very advanced form of those Play-Doh presses where you pick a mold, press the dough through it, and the shape you want comes out. For making pens, there are two main ways to shape the plastic, extrusion and injection molding. In injection molding, they heat plastic until it's gooey and then squirt it into special molds to make parts with a lot of small details like the clicky top of a pen. When the plastic inside the mold cools down, it hardens into the exact shape that was needed. For simpler, straight parts like the body of the pen where the ink goes, they use extrusion. This is a bit like squeezing toothpaste out of a tube, but in this case, they push heated plastic through a shape-making tool called a die. This forms long tubes or rods of plastic, which are then chopped up to the right size. By following these steps, you can be sure that every part of the pen fits together perfectly. This means that there will be no leaks and the pen will feel great in your hand. The process of making the metal parts starts after the plastic parts like the barrel and cap have been shaped. Things like the clip, the tiny ball in the tip, and sometimes even parts of the pen's bodies are subject to this. These parts are very important because they keep the pen from breaking and make sure it clips tightly to your notebook or pocket. Metal strips, usually brass, stainless steel, or aluminum, because they are strong and easy to shape, are used to start the process. We heat these sheets first so they're soft enough to shape. Then they're pressed into dies, which are molds to make the shapes of the pen's parts, such as the clip and the tip. Once the metal parts are shaped, they're cooled and then go through a finishing process to get rid of any rough edges and give them a polished look. This careful attention to detail makes sure that the metal parts not only work well, but also add to the pen's overall sleek look. This step of shaping the metal parts is important because it directly affects how well the pen works, from how it feels in your hand to how it writes on paper. Now that the parts of a ballpoint pen are made, it's time to make it possible to write with ink. The ink for ballpoint pens is specially made to dry quickly on paper without smudging and to flow smoothly through the pen's tip. It's kind of like being a wizard in a lab when you make ink for ballpoint pens. It's important that the ink is just right, not too thin or too thick. In order to make the perfect ink, people mix different color dyes with special liquids that help the ink move easily, as well as some secret ingredients that make sure everything works just right. These things make sure that the ink spreads out evenly and dries quickly, so it doesn't smudge on the paper. Once the ink formula is perfected, it's time to fill the pens. This is done with great care using automated machines that inject a precise amount of ink into each pen's reservoir. The amount of ink a pen can hold varies by design, but typically a ballpoint pen can write for about 2 kilometers before running out. During the filling process, quality control is key. Pens are tested to ensure they write correctly and do not leak. This might involve writing tests where machines check the ink flow on paper, ensuring that every pen meets the high standards expected by users. This phase of pen manufacturing ensures that when you pick up a pen to write, it delivers a smooth and reliable line from the first word to the last. Now that the ink is filled and the ballpoint pen's components are ready, the next step is assembling these parts. The assembly process is where everything comes together, and it's fascinating to see how each part fits into place to make a pen that writes smoothly. It's like watching a puzzle being completed right before your eyes. If you're enjoying this behind-the-scenes look at how a pen is made, why not like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel? There's plenty more to discover, and we wouldn't want you to miss out on any of our upcoming videos. First, the pen's metal ball is inserted into its socket at the tip, which is crucial for ink delivery. This tiny ball must roll freely within its housing to regulate the flow of ink onto the paper. This assembly step is meticulous, ensuring that the ball neither jams nor allows ink to leak. Next, the already full ink reservoir is connected to the tip of the pen. This is where the metal and plastic parts we talked about earlier come together. 
for pens that click or twist, extra bits like springs and thrust devices are also put together. These parts are very important for flexible pens because they make it easy to move the tip forward and backward with a button press or a cap twist. Each pen goes through a number of quality control checks while it's being put together. These tests make sure that the pen works well and looks good. Some of these tests could be making sure the ink flow is smooth and even, or checking the mechanics of retractable pens to make sure that the mechanism that pulls them back in works consistently. Usually, automated production lines are used to make sure that each pen is put together quickly and correctly. This technology helps keep the quality of thousands of pens the same while speeding up production to meet high demand. Now that the ballpoint pens are assembled, the next crucial step in the manufacturing process is quality testing. This step ensures that every pen meets the high standards expected for writing performance and reliability. Quality testing for ballpoint pens is quite a detailed affair. It involves several tests to check the pen's functionality and durability. For instance, one common test is for the ink flow. It ensures that the ink flows smoothly without leaking or clogging. This test can involve actually writing with the pen under different conditions to simulate how it will perform in real-world use. Pens are also checked to see how well they hold up against wear and weather conditions. This could mean putting the pens through a range of temperatures and humidity levels to make sure they can handle different weather conditions. These kinds of tests are very important because they make sure the pen will always work, no matter where it is. Using acoustic emission sensors is another interesting part of testing quality. This new method listens to the sounds made by the pen's parts working together while it writes. The sound waves are looked at to see if there are any irregularities or friction that could mean there's a problem with the pen's design or setup. This method is a very careful way to make sure that all of the pen's parts are working together properly, which makes writing smooth. Overall, quality testing involves looking closely at every part of the pen's performance, from how well it writes to how well it holds up under stress. This is done to make sure that the finished product meets the high standards of everyday use and what consumers expect. Now that we've talked about how ballpoint pens are put together, let's look at how their ink is made. Using both science and engineering, the process of making ink for ballpoint pens makes inks that last a long time and make writing smooth. The process starts with making the ink. The ink needs to be thick enough to not leak, but thin enough to write smoothly without getting stuck in the pen's ball mechanism. A solvent, which is usually an oil-based material like benzyl alcohol or phenooxyethanol, is one of the main parts of ballpoint pen ink. They help the color pigments or dyes move around, which lets the ink flow easily from the container to the paper through the ball tip. Some pigments are very strong and don't fade easily, which makes them perfect for papers that need to last. Dye, on the other hand, comes in many colors and keeps things bright. To make sure the ink is always the same, these parts are carefully mixed in big vats using strict quality controls. There are also things added to the mix that make the ink work better, like oleic acid and alkyl alkanolamide, which makes the ink move better and dry faster. Once the right ink formula is found, it is put through a lot of tests to make sure it meets all the color, viscosity, and drying time standards. This quality control is very important because it decides how well the ink works in different writing conditions and how long it lasts on paper. Filling the pen chambers with this carefully made ink is the last step in making ink. This gets the pens ready to be put together to make the final product. Usually, this step is done automatically to make sure of accuracy and speed, keeping the quality high for the number of pens made every day. Now, these pens are ready to be sent to its main consumer. The next step is packaging and distribution. This phase is where the pens are not only well protected, but also attractively presented. The packaging process begins with the caps being securely placed on each pen to prevent the ink from drying out and to maintain the pen's integrity during transit. 
This is typically done using automated machines that efficiently and accurately handle thousands of pens. Once capped, the pens are grouped and packed into boxes or blister packs, depending on the model and brand. These pack the packaged pens are distributed through various channels. They might be shipped directly to retail stores, sent to distribution centers, or made available for online purchase. The distribution strategy often depends on the target market and the brand's reach, with some pens going to luxury stationery stores and others to general retail markets. Throughout this process, from the careful capping of the pens to their final distribution, every step is optimized to ensure that the pens not only reach consumers in perfect condition, but also capture their attention through thoughtful packaging. And that wraps up our exploration of how ballpoint pens are made, from their intricate ink formulas to the final touches in packaging. It's amazing how much goes into creating these everyday tools that we often take for granted. If you enjoyed learning about the magic behind making pens and want to catch more cool facts and fun videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell icon so you never miss out on our upcoming adventures.